name of Jesus Christ is lifted high. Be my Lord and Savior. Take my life. Thank you, Jesus. Join us today in worshiping Jesus Christ. after 38 years who can make a man well and that's Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When God came into my life, He became my Father. Welcome to Evangelism in Action. This is Calgary, Canada, a city ripe and ready for the harvest. Street Church has been evangelizing the lost for years on Calgary City streets, and God is faithful, moving in a big way. In this episode, you'll get a glimpse of our ministry in action as we worship, serve food to the homeless, and lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus said, go make disciples of the nations, and this is something everyone can do by the power of the Holy Spirit in any city. What about yours? Welcome to Street Church. We hope you'll be blessed. Praise God. Christmas is a time of the year that many people are enjoying themselves. It's a family time. It's a, it's a time of the year that lots of people are joyful. They meet with families and they go wild. They, sh they go shopping and they do a lot of other things. It's one of the most happiest time of the year for some. But then on the other hand, for some is the most cruel time of the year, or is the most depressed time of the year. Lots of people, they have suicidal moods. Lots of people are not really happy. They miss their families. I remember a few times we did those festivals and after a few days some people would come to me and they said, you know, we didn't have, a fe we didn't have Christmas for 10 years, for 15 years. We were suicidal, we just wanted to commit a suicide. But then we heard the music and we heard the preaching. You see, that's why we are here. The food is awesome. We try to bring you the best. If you don't like the red meat, there are hot dogs and roasted beef. We did our best to bring you some good food but our reason for our presence here is not food alone we are here to let you know what happened 2000 years ago you know when you miss your families and your kids are in another province and then you didn't see them for many years and perhaps your wife is in a different place it's a very difficult time of the year when you drive or you walk the streets of Calgary and you feel so lonely, so lonely. We are surrounded by over one million people in the city of Calgary and sometimes we can feel so lonely. 
along, walking the streets, feeling that no one cares, thinking that why bother waking up the next morning. And I am sure there are some of you that had those kind of thoughts. You know, I know that for a fact because I used to have those thoughts as well. Surrounded by so many and yet feeling so alone. Loneliness is, uh, is, is one of the biggest problem, problems in our society right now. We live among people but yet we live alone. So today, we want to remind you why and what's the reason that we came. Why we came. 2,000 years ago, God knew that we cannot fix our problems. He knew that we are so deprived, so wicked in our hearts that it's impossible, impossible to address our problems in our own strength. Impossible. So he looked down and he saw you. And he saw me. And he decided to calm down himself for the redemption of sin. He says they cannot do it on their own. I will have to do it for them. I will do it for them. I will calm down. I will become one of them. And I will let them know it's going to be okay. Their tomorrow doesn't have to be like today. They may be lonely and depressed and suicidal today. But their tomorrow doesn't have to be like today. It's only possible with God, you see. That's why we are here. That's the very reason we come here over and over again. To let you know that there is a living God that loves you. To let you know that He loved you so much that He came down, become a man. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Why? Why this Creator of heavens and the earth would decide to come down? It's that love that we would never understand. It's one of the greatest mysteries of God. Uncompromised, unchangeable, unconditional love towards you and towards me. In the Old Testament you needed the blood of the animals as a sacrifice for our sins and those animals the blood of those animals would not remove those sins, would just cover them. The blood of animals could not do it, could not remove our sins. The only thing it could do is to cover our sins for a period of time. And then you had to go back and slaughter another animal so your sins would be covered again. But 2,000 years ago something happened. God fulfilled His promise and He gave us a spotless lamb. He came down. He says, I will die. I will shed my own blood for the redemption of sin. I will be crucified on a cross, the most shameful death for you. So you won't have to kill animals again as a sacrificial offering. I will be the lamb. The lamb had to be killed, slaughtered, to wash away our sins. Not to cover them, but to wash them away. And God says, if you choose that sacrifice, if you will accept my son, I will choose to remember your sins no more. There will be no more sins on you. You will be able to enter heaven. Because the spotless lamb, the holy blood of the living God, paid the price for you. That's the beauty of God. So we're going to have some testimonies. In Revelation it says that we will overcome the enemy, the devil, with the blood of the Lamb. And I just explained it to you what happened 2,000 years ago. The blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Son of the Living God came down, paid the price for us, and now God says you will conquer the enemy. You will overcome the enemy, the devil, with that blood. In other words, when the blood of Jesus covers you, washes away your sins, and makes you a son of the living God, God gives you the power to be a daughter of the Most High, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, 
the Almighty Creator, to be a son of the living God. Can you imagine that? From the son of the devil to the son of the living God. What a transformation. What a resurrection. Once you were dead, but now you are alive. It was all the blood of Jesus. Adam just walked. We have so much distraction right now. That's why I know when we have all this distraction, people wanting to stop the preaching of the gospel, that someone there in the lineup, somewhere that can hear my voice, God wants to save you. When we have so much attacks on the pulpit, we know that we know there's something in spiritual realm that is stirred. There's something going on. You cannot see it. You can only feel it. Feel it, the cry of the living God for some souls today. God wants to save some people today. He's crying out for you. And He wants to wipe your tears away. And God can do it. He says your sins will be like the west from the east. When I will wash them away, there will be no more. What a freedom in Christ we have. And another word in the Revelation, it says that we will overcome the enemy with the word of our testimony. The word of our testimony. Undeniable. The word of a testimony. I have been there, I walked through it, and that's what the Lord has done for me. And that's what you're going to hear now. Few people speaking to you what has happened to them. The word of our testimony, washed with the blood of Jesus. I want you to listen to them. I want you to open your hearts and be ready to receive what those people receive. God Almighty touched them. God Almighty set them free. And they are walking, living testimony of this powerful, mighty Creator that loves you so much that He would not even withhold His only begotten Son, but He would send Him and say, now go and die so they can live. That's the promise of the living God for you today. I want to remind you, Christmas is not about shopping. Christmas is not even about family time and gifts, food. Christmas is about Christ, the Lord, the Messiah that came down and died and rose again and is living on the right hand of God Almighty. He came to redeem you from the hands of the devil. So you can be a son or a daughter of the living God. Amen? And this is for you, if you are willing to accept this. The promises of God are for any man who is willing to accept them, take them and walk with them. So, why don't you come and share what this mighty God did for you. Thank you. My name is Joseph Coffin. And I'm from Prince Edward Island and when I was 38 years old I met the new living God because when I was 28 years old I had an accident in Ottawa and I was put into a wheelchair and I was told by the doctors that I would never walk and I was told by the doctors that I would die in 10 years. And they were right in one way. Because in 10 years, I was on the most heavy drugs that doctors can prescribe for pain. I was in there, the hospital, dying every month. And one night, April 23rd, I was in front of my toilet trying to vomit up the pills that I had taken for pain because I knew I had taken too many again. And I got to the point where I was done living. I was done fighting. 
and I needed help. And for the first time in my life, I called out to God. I said, God, I am sorry that I've got my life to this point. But I can't live any longer like this. If you can, could you please heal me and make me well again? And if that's not your will, and if I'm dying tonight, then God, please forgive me, because I've hurt a lot of people, and I've done a lot of wrong things. And I went to sleep, and I laid down beside my wife, who every night, she would check me to see if I was still breathing. I went to sleep, and I woke up the next morning, and God had done an amazing thing. Because for the first time in 10 years, I could put weight on my feet with no pain. For the first time in 10 years, I felt good. And people found out what had happened and they came to see me. And they said, Joe, we heard you're healed. And I said, yeah, I am. And they said, you know who healed you? And I said, no, I don't, but I think it's God because it's, I feel so good. I love everybody, and only God would do something this good. And they told me about God for the first time in my life, and they told me what He had done. And for the first time in my life, I talked with God, and I said, God, thank you for, for not giving up on me. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for healing me. And as my mind started getting clear of the drugs, I started being taught of who Jesus is. Not who Jesus was, but who Jesus is. That He is God. That He is my Savior and yours. And that He is waiting and knocking on the heart of every person in this world. And He is ready and willing to do amazing things in everyone's life. He is ready, willing, and able to save us. He's preparing a house for me in heaven right now. And how amazing is that? To go from a deathbed to having a place made for me in heaven. I know there's many people here that know where I'm coming from. There's many people here that are hurting, many people here that don't know God. But that's okay. Because God loves you and He's ready anytime you are to know you and for you to know Him. And all it takes, all it takes is just for you to open your heart and say, God, please, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. If anybody here has gone to church and have heard the stories in the Bible, the amazing thing is that it's true. And I found that out when I was 38 years old. God is amazing. Never give up on God, please. Because He never gives up on you. And He's ready today or any day. But the Bible says today is the day of your salvation. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. None of us know that we're going to have tomorrow. I didn't know if I was going to have tomorrow. I thought I was dying and I called out to God and God was there for me. And He's there for you. I don't know what else I can say other than that God is a loving, awesome God. If you don't know somebody in your life to talk to, then come to one of us. We've been down the same path and we can tell you how to get how to meet God. And if you don't know anybody, then right now, right this very second in your heart, you can say, God, help me. And God will. And the amazing thing is what He's about to do in your life. Life in heaven is going to be awesome. God's making it. But God says that we are to have life here and life abundant. 
Not a life full of drugs, not a life full of pain, not a life full of hurt, but a life of God. And the life of God is amazing. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Merry Christmas.
ones that I got a mansion way across Jordan, built just for me. Oh yeah. Well, I said I got a mansion way across Jordan. You've got to see. Oh yeah. He's gone to build it. Do oh, you understand? When it comes my turn to cross old Jordan, he's gonna be there. He got my hand. Well, I said I got a mansion. I'm telling you where across Jordan the boys sure built just for me. Oh, so I'm in church now every Sunday morning that I can be. Oh, yeah. And I read my Bible, oh, my friend, early in the morning, you know, down on my knees. Oh, yeah. The Lord's returning is near at hand. Yet very soon, as quick as a wink, like a thief in the night, he's going to take me to a heavenly land. Well, I said, I got a mansion. I want to tell you where it draws Joe. Take a fool to one is this when Jesus burst the sky. Stop grumbling and fussing, cause it's time you did what's right. Do you wanna see streets of gold or ever step through them gates of pearl? Well, you wouldn't wanna miss it. Every eye's gonna see him when he comes back to this old world. When I said I got a mansion, I'm gonna tell you where it goes. Jordan, for sure, built just for me. Oh, built for me. Well, I said I got a mansion, oh, no way across Jordan, for sure, built just for me. Church, it's time to stand up. Church, it's time to go out and become fisher of men. It's enough of sitting in our pews and watching our neighbors to die. God says, go into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. God did not call us to sit in our pews for all the world to die. He called us to go out, go out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and signs and wonders and salvations will follow you. Because God is not like man, he does not lie. And I bless you with that commission, the commission of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, go.